This video will be dedicated to the practice redemption task outcome free solutions for the financial arithmetic topic for Year 11 General Maths 2020. We do need to use the ClassBet calculator in conjunction with this and the two main features that we're using is the graphs and table app and also the financial app. Now just be aware that this is an emulator so the positionings of these buttons found in your calculator might be within a different position. Let's go ahead and look at the first question. Lexi is looking at investing with two different banks. There's Banky Bank that offer a 1.8% per annum simple interest account where Southpac uh, which is a parody of Westpac offers a 1.75% per annum compound interest account. Lexi has $90,000 to invest. We're going to use our calculator to find the interest earned for Banky Bank for the first six years and complete the table below to two decimal places. And we're also going to do this for Southpac uh, for the first six years and again complete the table below to two decimal places. The first thing we need to do is determine what type of interest we are working with. Banky Bank are working with simple interest and we always know that our simple interest formula is P times R times T over 100. Now what we're so used to is finding the interest given a principle, given a rate and given a time frame and a specific time frame. Now the things that don't change is the principal amount. Lexi is investing $90,000. And the rate in which Bank Bank is offering for the simple interest is 1.8. Now we're so used to given a time frame within here, but the thing about this time frame is that we're conducting the first six years. So we're actually having a varying time frame. So we're just going to leave this as T for now, mainly because we know this is the thing that's going to vary within our calculator. This will still be all over 100. Now this is for Banky Bank. And Banky Bank again uses simple interest. Now for Southpac, for Southpac, we run into a bit of a problem because we want to get the interest amount, but the formula that is given to us is the amount uh, A equals P1 plus R over 100 to the power of T. But it's only asking for the interest. So if I plug this principle and rate and have time varied into the, uh, the calculator itself, it's only gonna spit out the full amount within the account and not the interest in itself. So we have to be careful with this. So to bypass this, we know that to get the interest amount, we take our amount that's within the account and we subtract the principal. Now we already know what A is equal to. It's this formula here. So to get our interest, we can take our A which is P1 plus R over 100 to the power of T, but then we need to find the interest, so we need to subtract what the principal is in the first place. So this here can sometimes cause confusion. This is again just to get the interest amount, and all we're doing is just taking the full amount uh, formula for compound and just subtracting that P or subtracting that principal. And we know what variables we need to put in for principal and rate. So our I is equal to what the principal is. Again, this doesn't change, 90,000 um, times one plus. Now be careful, the rate for Southpac is 1.75, 1.75. Some students will sometimes put 1.8 just out of habit because they see that percentage there, but it's with a different bank. So you've got to put 1.75. The T, the time frame, is the thing that varies. So we're just going to leave it as T for now. And we're going to subtract that principal amount again. Now, obviously, we're anticipating this amount here to be greater 
then $90,000 as this T number changes. So when it goes to the first year, second year, third year, etc. Now that we've got our two amounts, our two uh, specific formulas, uh, I might say, we're going to put this into our calculator. So we need to go into the graphs and table app here. If you've already got stuff here, make sure you go edit and clear all. Now the first thing we are going to put in is this formula here. But instead of using T, we're just going to use the letter X, which can be found on your keyboard. And make sure that you put this in the fraction format. So in Math 1 in keyboard, press this button here to get the fraction up. Put in 90,000 times 1.8 times, in this case, you will just leave it as the X because this is just used to using Y and X as its variables. Press down on your cursor, put in 100, and make sure you press execute. You will know that this is executed by seeing two things, the multiplications turn into dots, and also this gets ticked. Now we're going to multitask this. We're gonna put in the second formula as well. Now this one is going to look a little bit uh, more complicated, but that's okay. This is going to be 90,000 times, open bracket, one plus, plus rather, put in your fraction, 1.75 is a percentage, over 100, go across, close that bracket, Now we need to put this to the power of x, so we'll use this button here, again, which can be found in math one, to the power of x, now just make sure that once you've put that power of x, you'll go across, and you put the cursor down. And you can see that this is being done because the cursor is initially smaller and then turns bigger. Now we just got to finalize this by subtracting that initial uh, amount that Lexi is investing in the first place. When you press execute, you'll see the multiplications have turned into dots and this is being ticked. The next thing now that we want to do is we want to establish what values we want this to vary to for our table. So we'll go ahead and click this button here, which is the X, Y button. And this will establish how many years you want this to go up to. Our time here is started at zero and it's going to end at six years. So we're going to put it as six. Our step, because this is varying by year, we just keep our step as one. When you press OK, um, nothing has been shown yet. We're just establishing the fact that we want our table to vary from 0 to 6. When we press this button here, which is our table button, you have both, we'll resize this, you have both Y1, which is the banky bank simple interest, and Y2, which is the compound interest from South Bank. These are the numbers that you will be putting into the table here, which is what I'm going to do now. Now I'm just going ahead and fill in both tables, uh, both columns for the table for Bank Bank and South Pack. Now there's something that some students tend to forget, and the question says uh, correct to two decimal places. Now with Bank Bank, this is quite simple because there are no decimal points that happen afterwards, so there are no center values. But then with this one here for um, South Pack, you can see that what corresponds to here and what I'm actually writing is a bit different. See, what the calculator will do is because of the limited space there is, we'll round it to whatever decimal uh, place uh, makes fit or sees fit for the space here. But when you actually press on the price itself or the interest amount itself, the proper amount will appear on the bottom. So I know this is 56 cents as opposed to just 0 0.6 for the second year because it says 0 0.5625. So I'll have to write that 56 part. Same here. This is actually 4808.169 because of this nine, this gets bumped up to two. So I'll keep it as 20 cents, 31 cents, 50 cents, and 21 cents accordingly. So make sure that you press 
uh, specifically for the compound interest, unless the um, the amount that she's investing starts with a, a, a cent amount of some sort. Just be careful uh, of your rounding and the uh, precision of your answers. Now that we've got this filled out, we're going to answer the two questions. Which of these plans would you choose, Banky Bank or South Bank, if the investment is for, for the first part, three years? And we're going to state why and we're going to support the answer with figures. So we're going to look at the third year and we can see that Banky Bank's amount of interest and South Pack's amount of interest, Banky Bank's amount of interest is actually considered more. It's more um, than South Bank. So in this case, we will just answer this as Banky Bank. We'll go with Banky Bank. So there's our answer to it. And now we need to state why. Well, the reason why is because there's more interest. And you need to back this up with figures. So the more interest is based on the fact of the difference between the two amounts for the second year. This ends up being $51.80. So there's more interest by $51.80. Now, the second question, I'm not gonna get to it yet um, because I have to scroll up a bit, but the second question says, um, after six years in state Y and support your answer with figures. For six years, even though initially Banky Bank had more interest after the second year, when we get to six years, you can actually see that South Pack eventually takes over with the amount of interest. Um, and this happens just at the fifth year. At the fifth year, it's uh, up by $55.50. So at the sixth year, uh, again, it will be greater because it's on compound interest. So when we answer this one, six years and say why, we would just write South Pack. And in this case, uh, more interest. There's more interest. And we just find out the difference between the bigger one and the smaller one. That was nine, seven, nine, eight, three, no, nine, seven, two, zero, nine, seven, two, zero. Um, and this ends up being $153.21. So there's more interest by $153.21. Uh, the next question is a bit cropped there, apologies, but this is for question two. We're going to calculate the following using the financial app on the classified calculator. Now say you invest. Now before I actually answer this question, sorry, I just got to backtrack um, because the, some of the mistakes that I saw with this type of question before is you've got to look at the context of what the question is. We are investing money or Lexi specifically is investing money. If we are investing money, we're putting money into the bank in the hope that we get interest out of it or more money. Some people answered uh, the lesser amount of interest is better because they were under the assumption that this was a loan. So you have to pay back a certain amount that's less. Be careful of your context. If this was a loan, then yes, the less interest that you pay back, the better. But because this is an investment, you want more money to go into the bank. So I um, want you to answer more money or more interest for the preferred bank, not less. I have to get that off my chest. All right, calculate the following using the financial app in the class, but calculator, you invest $1,000 with a bank that offers 1.34% simple interest. How much interest have you earned after six years? Assume each day has 365 days in it and make sure you circle the interest amount. A lot of people did not answer the question within this format. To make it simple, the redemption task that you need to do already has this laid out. For the first one, six years. So we need to figure out what six times 365 days is because we have to put it in days and we're assuming there's 365 days 
for each year. This ends up being $2,190, $90, 90 days. The interest uh, amount as a percentage is 1.34. Your present value, so because you are investing money, you will be given this money to the bank. So now you don't have $1,000. That $1,000 is not there anymore. So it's minus 1,000. So in order to put this into your calculator, let's go back to menu and we're gonna click on the financial app here. Uh, we go ahead and clear this all. And when you clear it, go back to simple interest. The amount of days we're just gonna put in as 2190. The interest amount is 1.34. And the present value is negative 1000 because it's an investment. When you click on the SI button, it should tell you the amount of simple interest, which is $80.40. $80.40. And this, um, the future value for simple interest, so at the end of the six years or 2,190 days, you'll end up having $1,000. And eighty dollars and forty cents. One thousand eighty dollars and forty cents. Now the part of the question says, make sure you circle the interest amount. We are trying to check to see you know the difference between which one is the interest amount and which one is the um, the future value. But please make sure you correct you correctly circle the correct one by circling this one here, assuming it asks you for the interest amount. We're gonna do the same thing again, but this time it's for 21 years. And we're gonna see how much is in the actual accounts after 21 years. So not the interest, how much is in the actual account. The amount of days, 21 times 365, is 7,665 days. Interest still stays the same as 1.34. Present value, again, we're investing $1,000, so it's a negative 1,000. And when you go ahead and alter these numbers accordingly, 7665, your simple interest and your future value will change. $281.40 is how much interest that has been earned within the 21 years. And your future value will then be $1,281.40. Forty cents. Because it's asking for the account amount, we need to circle this one here. And that is it for outcome three.